Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here from Virtualization How-To, and today I've got something really fun to share with you. Over the past few months, as you've seen in my previous videos, I've been building out several Proxbox Home Lab servers with really awesome Minis Forum motherboards, and I've had a blast testing and tuning them and running them here in the lab. So I figured, why not put them all together and break down my top three Proxbox server builds for performance and efficiency. These aren't just theoretical builds. These are all real hardware that I am running right here in the home lab. I've got some good feedback for you guys, so let's jump in and take a look at my top three Proxmox server builds using these awesome motherboards. At the number three slot is the Workstation Beast, and this is built upon the BD790i X3D motherboard with the 7945X3D processor. Now, this was my last build, a bit over the top, Aesthetically, I wanted to make this pleasing to the eye. It's a GPU capable workstation slash server. It's built on top of that BD790i X3D board. The Ryzen 9 7945X3D processor has that AMD 3D vCache, which makes it especially suitable for gaming or other graphics intensive processing. 16 cores, 32 threads. Other specs include 128 gigs of DDR5 memory. It doesn't officially support that, but as you all know, I've been heavily testing the 128 gig kit, two times 64 gig crucials. The RTX 5070 was the card that I wanted to put in there. I've still not done that yet. I've got a one terabyte Predator Gen 4 NVMe drive, and also I've got a four terabyte Samsung 990 Pro for my VM storage. Now the case was the Thermaltake Tower 200. Now with this setup, I can do GPU pass through, run high density VMs with Proxmox. I can even do uh, content creation, gaming, all in the same Proxmox environment. And that Thermal Take Tower 200 gives it plenty of airflow and the vertical aesthetic that just makes it feel like a really cool uh, machine that runs in a home lab. And I've never done the vertical build tower case before. Now the downsides, it's more expensive due to the GPU and premium case and only supports two M.2 drives. However, all of the boards in this category do. I added a 10 gig ethernet card as well. Can be a Proxmox workstation for sure and a dual purpose home lab machine. You can do GPU compute, home lab projects, maybe even gaming on the side. And I thought of this as the best of both worlds build for my use case here in the home lab. It does not include SATA ports, so you won't be able to install a separate drive using a SATA SSD drive and hold off all of your M.2 slots for the purposes of running virtual machines, containers, other types of storage. Now, there are some workarounds to that. You can use riser cards, you can use add-in cards that add those various ports, uh, perhaps in a PCIe slot, which this motherboard does have. However, do make note of that. It doesn't have the native 10 gig Ethernet connectivity either, which again, all of the boards, these three Proxmox bills from Innis Forum, none of those have 10 gig Ethernet. All of them have two and a half gig Ethernet. So those are just some downsides with this board. However, I think it packs a tremendous punch in a extremely small footprint that you can put inside of very small cases if you have very low profile, low footprint bills that you want to add to your home lab. So really cool. But that's at the number three slot. Build number two is high end efficiency, I'm calling it, with the BD795i SE motherboard. Now, this next one really surprised me, the Minisform 795i SE. It has the same processor, relatively speaking, as the X3D. However, it's the 7945HX without the 3D vCache, and you can build ultra compact mini PC form factor with this. A standard ITX motherboard, so it's very small. Uh, I've got the 128 gigs again of DDR5 memory unofficially supported, but I can say it's been rock solid so far and it's whisper quiet. Um, you also get the dual Gen 4 NVMe slots, PCIe slot. You can add a 10 gig Ethernet card, which I have done. It already includes also the CPU cooler, which is really nice. Breaking it down again, 
Ryzen 9 7945HX, 128 gigs of memory, DDR5, dual Gen 4 NVMEs. Networking, you can add on a 10 gig Ethernet via the PCIe slot, but it has the built in 2.5 gig networking Realtek adapter. It's very small, it's efficient. Minis Forum calls it the mobile on desktop. You do have to add a 120 millimeter fan that you bring to the build. With power optimization, if you get the core performance boost off, you're going to have half the performance relatively, but half the power draw as well. So this one's ideal for people looking to run Docker Swarm stacks, Kubernetes nodes, multiple VMs, even lab grade SaaS environments. Now downsides to note with this number two slot build is it has no SATA ports, no ECC memory support, but the factory installed heatsink does a actually a really good job. So if you're space conscious, if you want the smallest build possible, this ITX build is awesome. Now at the number one slot, I'm calling this the 16 core beast, the BD795M motherboard. Now this was my powerhouse build. Really it's the same amount of CPU power as the rest of the builds, but this one, I really like the form factor. The micro ATX motherboard offered more space, more connectivity, and it was paired with, again, the Ryzen 9 7945HX processor, 16 cores, 32 threads, micro ATX form factor. I have it loaded with 128 gigs of DDR5 sodium memory and this server can run Proxmox VMs, containers, Kubernetes clusters, you name it. Uh, the specs, as we've already basically covered, Ryzen 9 7945HX currently have a 10 gig networking adapter, Intel network adapter for VMware ESXi compatibility if I want that, uh, dual Gen 4 NVMe drives. Cooling, however, with this one, you have to bring your own CPU cooler. So that is different than the other two builds. However, this system doesn't just run Proxmox. One of the things I like about it, this system has more IO and connectivity. It has SATA ports, which which the other two do not. So you can have a boot drive and then leave those M.2s that are precious in these types of size of bills for things that you care about, like virtualization, VMs, containers. Uh, you can run core performance boost either on or off. With that off, you can basically put a ceiling on this motherboard at around 66 watts at 100% CPU. And that is excellent when you're talking about 32 threads. However, you are hamstringing your performance by doing that. But this thing has so much performance as it is, it's really something that I haven't noticed once I have turned that on, everything is still blazing fast. Pros and cons of this one, it has full 128 gig RAM compatibility. It's got SATA uh, ports. It's got M.2. It's got the PCIe slot. Doesn't have the cooler installed. Uh, no onboard 10 gig Ethernet, 2.5 gig, just like the other builds. Limited thermals. Also, depending on the cooler, of course, your thermals are going to depend on that. Uh, GPU support with the PCIe slot has really good airflow depending on the case. The temps I have found have been very reasonable, staying at the moderate to low high end of this board with tons of IO and CPU uh, load on the Proxmox server. So there you have it, three Proxmox server builds, all tested, optimized, and ran in my home lab now for some months. But let's do a quick recap. Some of the build pros and cons, just brief ones. The BD795M build is ultimately my favorite out of the three. It has the full 128 gigs of memory compatibility. It has SATA ports as well as M.2 slots. It has the PCIe slot for 10 gig. Doesn't have the cooler install, so uh, you're going to have to bring your own cooler. No onboard 10 gig, but again, the PCIe slot. Uh, the BD795i SE, it's tiny, it's quiet. You can run the 128 uh, gigs of memory. Uh, it includes a CPU cooler. However, no SATA ports, and that may make a difference. None of these builds also have ECC support. The BD795i SE motherboard, it's tiny, it's quiet. You can do the 128 gigs of memory, even though that's not officially supported and not on any of these builds. It includes the CPU cooler. However, no SATA ports are included on this board. The BD790i X3D is great for graphics, gaming, if you want a dual purpose workstation, GPU support, 128 gigs of memory supported, uh, even though not officially. It has no onboard 10 gig Ethernet connectivity, only the 2.5 gig. Also to mention, all three of these boards do not support ECC memory, so that may be a deal breaker for some. However, 
I think for many to most home labbers, that's not going to make a tremendous amount of difference due to everything else these boards offer. Each of these bills brings something different, just a little bit different flavor to the Ryzen 9 7945HX or X3D processor. Uh, so it depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for compact size, raw horsepower, or GPU compatibility, there is something here between those three boards. And if you tried any of these mini form boards or have a favorite Proxmox build of your own, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Uh, so definitely check out these boards. I'm going to have the build of materials, kind of a all together aggregate of all three build of materials in the description for this video. If you found this video helpful, Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you don't miss future content. Please do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.